So hi, uh, like I said, uh, we're uh, both work on the OpenStack uh, project uh, development infrastructure. Um, uh, the short version of that is that we're the people that, uh, by our, uh, from our point of view, uh, make everything easy and automated for people, and probably from the developer's point of view, get in their way from doing all of the uh, leap fun code coding things that they they really want to do. Um, I'm I'm sure they all love us. Um, uh, we're going to chat a little bit about some of the great uh, automated type of things that we do to um, have the two of us be able to manage uh, a community of um, hundreds of people. Um, so to start off just a little bit about OpenStack, um, OpenStack is actually a, uh, I would say, loose federation of pro uh, projects. Um, and there's a couple of the folks in the project who would like for it to be looser. Um, but we have, we have multiple distinct uh, projects. At the moment, there's six core projects. Um, uh, 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 Glance, which is the image service, which somebody, as a quick uh, step back, OpenStack is uh, open source cloud infrastructure software uh, that is that is uh, used to create your own cloud. Um, I realize that I might not have uh, mentioned that, and it's possible that somebody hasn't heard of OpenStack. Um, uh, it's made up of several components. Uh, it originally started off with two, uh, Nova and Swift, Nova being the, uh, the compute service, uh, so not to use other people's marketing terms, but uh, if you've ever heard of Amazon ZC2 product, uh, it's the thing that does the thing like that, it spins up servers for you. Uh, and Swift, which is the object storage, uh, which is uh, sort of similar to Amazon's S3, except different, because it's not the same thing, um, uh, but is also where you can put data. Uh, in addition to that, we've now got uh, the image service is where you would upload your, uh, your machine images. Um, uh, Horizon, which is the, the web GUI toolkit, or excuse me, dashboard. Um, Quantum, which is networking as a service, and Keystone, which is auth uh, authentication as a service. Uh, there's several other projects that are in incubation at the moment, um, and, uh, and the list will continue to grow over time, uh, which means that when we're talking about doing development infrastructure, we're not doing development infrastructure just for uh, one uh, source code repository or, or project, but uh, similar to um, some other people out there, uh, Android being a good example, uh, we're actually a collection of related uh, repositories, which makes things all the much more fun. Um, so uh, a point about our contributors, uh, our lovely clients, as it were. Um, we uh, Obviously, coders are themselves individuals. Um, turns out that companies don't write code uh, as a unit, uh, they are made up of individuals who, who write the code. Um, in the case of OpenStack, I don't know how specific this, like, I don't know, the thing, one of the things we've noticed is essentially we have very few people hacking on OpenStack who are doing it in their spare time uh, at home. It's almost all corporate contributors. Um, I'm sure there's a, a uh, uh, exception to that rule that proves the rule somewhere, um, but it's, it's certainly, uh, we've got a lot of people being paid to work on it. Um, and uh, for that reason, there's, there's two important things to, that we have to take note of. One is that the, um, the number and quality of the contributions that we get varies wildly. Um, uh, we have all of a sudden, uh, and, and also the number that we have in the community could change at any moment. AT&T recently just announced that they were going to be a part of OpenStack. Um, and for all I know, they could show up with 150 developers tomorrow. Um, you heard about that when we did. Yeah, exactly. That's like a couple, uh, it was a webinar, I think, that somebody did it somewhere. And all of a sudden, apparently, at and is playing with us now. Um, I have no idea if there will be one, zero, or a thousand developers from them, but I sort of got to be able to handle that. Um, uh, it's a sort of unexpected scaling uh, uh, si situation from process perspective. A um, uh, little bit about how, we're, how we uh, orient things. Uh, we started off um, with a lot of us having had some Ubuntu uh, experience. Uh, so we took on the time-based release uh, idea from, uh, from Ubuntu. Uh, we release similar to them on a six-month cadence. Um, and we actually uh, release a couple of weeks before an Ubuntu release uh, to assure that the latest OpenStack is always in the latest uh, Ubuntu. Um, we, uh, and we've been, we've been working with them pretty closely from, from the get-go. Um, not to leave anybody else out, we're always, uh, we, we do work with people from the other, uh, from the other distros, but at the beginning, oh, we'll get to it later. Um, we have design summits where we all get together. Uh, again, this is taken from uh, Canonical's uh, structure. Uh, we get together um, uh, at the beginning of each development cycle to plan the release. Uh, so that's two meetings a year. 
uh, again, like a couple weeks right after the release or before the beginning of the, of the next cycle. Uh, our trunk is continuously open. Uh, we don't ever close down trunk. Um, uh, and we do, through Garrett and through the stuff we're going to talk about, uh, development is done directly on, on master. We do not have uh, long-running feature branches that are, that are public. Uh, if you do things on your laptop, whatever, I don't care, but uh, you're submitting your patches for review to go to land directly on master, and then we do, we do testing to make that work. Um, we, uh, we do one-month releases every uh, 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 milestones that are looking forward towards the next release. Uh, and then once, a, once, a, a, uh, once we have made a release, then we make a stable branch of that that's there for ongoing maintenance. And those are actually typically turned over to a group of people that are uh, composed, comprised mainly of the, the folks in the distros. Um, because once we've released it, ah, you know, we don't really care. Um, yeah, but it's actually, uh, that's sort of a, a bit of a, su a success story in yeah. that that wasn't in the original design for the project, but people from uh, several distributions came and said, we need a place to collaborate on these patches. We don't want uh, Fedora to apply this patch and, and, and Ubuntu not be able to take advantage of it. So that's sort of something that, that the distros came up with uh, uh, by themselves, and we uh, help facilitate that as a project. Yeah. So as far as that goes, we actually, the core, the core team for Nova being the sort of where a lot of the development happens, the core Nova team who have uh, of review rights on, on Nova actually don't have review rights on the stable branch of Nova. The, the folks who are doing the distribution packaging work actually essentially own it at that point. We've released it to the, we released it to the world and now the world gets it. Um, so, uh, so that's, yeah, that's a really fun thing. Um, so the, the underlying vision behind the tooling and process that we're talking about here uh, has a couple of elements. Um, uh, and it, it, starts with, it starts with the idea of consistent tooling. We've got, it's constantly in, <laughs> in, a, in a group of, uh, of, of hundreds of developers like herding cats. Everybody has their own, uh, their own ideas. They've got their own opinions on how things should be done. And everybody's got their pet tool in, in, the, in the corner. I don't care. Um, because that's not, that's not really scalable because then we get into VI versus Emacs arguments. Um, so as much as possible, we keep a consistent set of tooling across all of the projects uh, so that people can uh, easily contribute to any of them and they know how that works, which leads into the consistent process. The process for contributing uh, across any of the OpenStack pro projects is the same. Uh, so you come in and you work on one of them, you can work on any of them. Uh, and, and you know what to expect, you know how they're going to be laid out, you know how everything is going to work. Um, and the, the intent is that that leads to a consistent product. Um, we're, we're not testing one of them differently than we're testing another one. We're not running one of them through a different process than another one. There's not some guy off in the corner who just does his own thing. Um, we, we sort of know what we're doing. And because of that, then we can, uh, we can reap a multiplier effect from not just having 20 developers working on Nova and five developers working on Swift, but we actually have 25 developers who fully have the capabilities to work on the project as a whole, um, uh, which, which I believe gains us a lot more traction uh, moving forward. Um, uh, with the, the idea of consistent tooling, uh, like I'm, one of the things that we're trying to get rid of there is a lot of people doing a lot of meta development. What I don't need is somebody in each project working and writing their own setup.py files. Um, it's, it's, it's actually just not interesting work. Um, uh, and, and typically, somebody will go off into the weeds and like come up with all sorts of crazy, uh, crazy things that might need to be done to create a tarball. Uh, and and that's, uh, that doesn't help anybody. Uh, and then nobody knows how to do that once they get hit by a truck or, uh, or just you know, take another job. Um, as we get process, process diverging, we get developers wasting their time, uh, either, either working on little, little pet tools or uh, on trying to figure out how to work with another project, and that's, uh, that's also just a, a waste of energy. Um, we're, we lowers, uh, keeping a consistent set of tooling lowers onboarding time, uh, and especially when I say consistent tooling, I also should be really clear, I, to, the, to the best of our ability, we try and keep that to be reasonably standard. I don't want to build our own build system. Um, that's, I've, I've worked on those projects before, <laughs> right? It is so much fun. Everybody wants to do it, um, just like everybody wants to write their own REST library uh, and their own web framework. Um, and, their own uh, configuration management their system. Their own configuration management system. Um, uh, we, we try and keep it as, stand, as bog standard as humanly possible. So I want you to be able to grab a OpenStack source repository and do standard commands with Python setup.py without having to uh, read a readme file to learn how to interact with our source code repository uh, and have things work pretty much like you would expect them to work. We've got a couple deficiencies in the area that we're trying to fix, but anyway. Um, so project-specific weird build crud we try and get rid of as much as possible. Um, 
this is, a, oh wow, it even scrolled off the screen. We have a lot of these. Um, this, is, this is sort of a, when I talk about development infrastructure systems, this is sort of what I'm talking about. Um, the main two are uh, Garrett, and, uh, uh, Garrett and Jenkins. Garrett is where we're doing our code review uh, on, and we're going to talk about that a lot more in detail in a second. Uh, that feeds into Jenkins, which we're using for doing uh, uh, testing. Uh, we do testing before merges uh, in, our, in our trunk. We also do some testing post-merge for things that aren't quite stable enough from a testing perspective to be able to do pre-merge. Um, uh, we also use that to do post-merge artifact management, things like tarball uploads, uh, translations processing, things of that nature. Um, for bare metal deployment testing, we use Orchestra from Ubuntu, which is based on Cobbler from Red Hat. One of the weird situations where you've actually got a tool that was developed essentially by two distros. Uh, and if, like, if both Red Hat and, and Ubuntu are, do, are working on the same tool, it's got to be good, right? Um, but anyway, it's, it's, been really, it's been really helpful um, to do that, and we uh, might get into that here, depending on how much time we got. Um, we use Launchpad for everything uh, that isn't code review um, uh, in, in terms of managing the project. So bugs, blueprints, uh, we release tarballs to that. We manage translations there. It's the open ID source of our single sign-on system. Uh, group permissions in terms of who gets to, who is able to review things in Garrett. It's all managed through there. Uh, we also manage documentation servers, IRC bots. We've got a planet-based uh, planet uh, blog aggregator, uh, package repositories, we run etherpads. All of these things are tools that we try and provide for the, for the community so that everybody's got uh, what they need to be able to do, but also so that we know what it is so that if something goes away, we know how to fix it. Um, because the last thing you want is somebody to start depending on something and then it, it's not there anymore. Um, a couple of these things are actually on the to-do list because uh, at least two of them are running on some random person's machine. Um, and I have been asking for a couple months where, where they're running from. Uh, so we're trying to, trying to keep that to a minimum as well. Um, uh, our consistent environment, uh, at the moment we target uh, all of our development uh, platforms target Ubuntu, just uh, the, the latest Ubuntu release. Uh, is uh, is the is the basis, um, which doesn't mean that we don't care about the other uh, the other distros or the other releases, um, but so that every person's coding doesn't have to take into account Ubuntu four releases of Ubuntu four releases of, of Fedora Arch Gen two Mandriva whatever we try and keep that as a basis, and then luckily the and it's Python there's not that much divergence. Um, Everything is in Python. Uh, we made a decision in the policy board a while back that we would, uh, we would maintain a, a consistent uh, programming language um, unless somebody comes up with a reason why a particular piece can't be in that programming language. Um, so far, nobody has come up with a reason why a particular thing can't be written in Python. Um, I know of a couple who are about to try, uh, but uh, we'll see how successful they are at that. Um, uh, for the developers, we have uh, a, te a local testing system that they use, uh, virtual env based, uh, virtual env and pip based tests. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, all of our uh, development chatting is done in IRC. There's a tool called DevStack that some guys wrote uh, that does uh, basically local deploys into a VM on your, on your machine so you can do local integration testing, which is also the basis of the testing that we do inside of uh, Jenkins pre-merge. Pre That's actually, it's a, it's a really good way to sort of start to play around with OpenStack as well. Uh, it'll it'll uh, set up an OpenStack installation on a VM for you, and uh, and you can play around with it. And it does it with Git checkouts of all of the components, so you can you know control C them, uh, hack on them a bit, and restart them right inside of a screen session. Yeah, uh, and it's an annotated shell script, uh, which at first I was like, oh, it's a big annotated shell script, but then. That's actually sort of easier to read than, say, a large repository worth of chef, uh, chef recipes for a basic install. So. There's a reason it's called dev stack. Yeah, not intended, just to be really clear, not intended for production deployments. Please, with the love of all that is holy, it's, it's intended for you to use on your laptop to, to do, so that, so that you don't have to learn everything there is to know about releasing a large multi-node system uh, to be able to do test, local development testing. Um, anyway, and then the thing that we're going to talk about a lot is uh, the thing I mentioned earlier, we, we run a gated trunk, which means that, um, which means that, that uh, developer, a developer's process, which might be the next thing. Oh, no, yeah. We do a, uh, we do a, all of, the, all of the commits that are going to come in get tested before they land on master, and if they don't pass the tests, they don't land. Um, so there is, there is never, ever a commit, ever, in the history of the project that has landed on trunk that doesn't pass, at least at the moment, the unit tests. We've been working on adding integration tests uh, to that, um, but uh, like literally commit one, we, we set up the gated trunk before 
before the commits started rolling. Uh, and we'll talk about the mechanisms of that. Um, the reason we do that uh, is, is, is many. Um, primarily, it's to ensure code quality, right? Uh, I don't care how much you really want that feature, and if it doesn't work, it's not landing. Um, it's, it's that simple. Um, but one of the other things that it does is it protects developers, right? Because if you're going to do development, you pull trunk, and you start doing your development, and then you run the tests, and they break, guess what broke it? Your code. Uh, guess who knows how to fix the thing you just wrote? You. Um, so as opposed to you trying to do tests, and then it's broken, and now all of a sudden you're trying to debug somebody else's code, which you don't really even know their intent, how can you possibly be expected to do that? So that's one of the really big keys uh, that we get out of this. Um, uh, like I said, it protects, the, it protects the tree. You don't have to worry about the, the tree being broken, so we don't have that wait till Jenkins is green, and then you can do something. It's always green. Uh, if it's not, well, yeah, if it's not green, there's a big problem. Um, and another thing, this, this comes from some past experiences with things, it's egalitarian. We don't have anybody that's special. You don't have a guy with uh, ability to push code directly into the repo bypassing code review. Um, it's, it, it all goes through a code review system, it all, it's all peer reviewed, so you don't have like the random maverick developer who decides he's going to do whatever he feels like doing. Um, it's, it's the same process for a person working at Rackspace as it is for a person working at HP as it is for a 14-year-old uh, in his bedroom that feels like he wants to get into cloud computing. Don't care. He submits code, the patch gets reviewed, it gets in. That's it. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the thing. Um, those are the things that we get out of that. Um, and one of the ways that we do that uh, from our perspective, since there, uh, for a long time there was me, uh, and then uh, recently over the last six months, uh, there's also been Jim. Um, uh, so, so that I don't go absolutely crazy, uh, it's all automated. Uh, because when you've got enough developers working on things, if it's not automated, uh, it's, it's just a failure. Uh, most of the things that a human might want. Any, any human interaction in this is just an opportunity for failure uh, and almost never has an opportunity to make things better. Like you can't like land the patch better. Um, <laughs> like yeah, I, I committed the crap out of that. I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you can land it badly though. Yeah, you can definitely land it badly. So if it's a, if it's a thing where the only human uh, option is to mess it up, uh, it should be automated. Um, and so this is a picture of our nice uh, green um, Jenkins uh, that that runs. This might be a little bit old, um, but uh, you know, just ignore that. Um, uh, so the way that the process works. Um, uh, to get in that uh, is that code, a developer checks out code from master, um, writes it, tests it locally in a virtual env using tools that we've got in the tree. Uh, they submit it to Garrett for code review. Uh, it's peer reviewed, it's either accepted or rejected. Um, at that point it is run through automated checks uh, in Jenkins um, as soon as, the, as, soon as the, the code review acceptance lands. Um, if those checks pass, the code is merged. If those checks fail, the code is rejected and sent back to the developer for, uh, for, for re-review. Yes? I was wondering why you didn't do the automated first and then the peer review. Glad you asked, <laughs> uh, because that's a huge security hole. Um, because basically, you're just letting anybody submit code to a system and then run on your build farm um, without anybody having seen what it is. Um, <laughs> we, we have the, the cooperation of a couple of uh, large cloud service providers, and our Jenkins farm runs um, quite a few uh, Jenkins slaves. And uh, for some of the tests, we build up, build machines on demand and run them. So, uh, you know, it's, it would be a, a useful target to take control of our, of our Jenkins system and use it for nefarious purposes. Yeah. Also, uh, the, the other reason past security, because there's, there's uh, optimizations that we can make to the process so that if we know who you are, say you're a core committer, I might be a little bit more assured that you're maybe not doing uh, a, a botnet uh, in a unit test, right? Um, I might know who you are. You might still be doing that, but like I'm, I might be a little bit more You could have a bad day. You could have a really bad day and be really upset. Um, however, there's another thing, which is that I, I don't care if you wrote good code, right? What I care is when I apply your code to the tree, is that going to be good? Um, so if I test it when you submit it, then I'm testing what you wrote, and that's cool. Uh, and that makes you feel good about the quality of what you wrote. However, other commits might have landed. In fact, they probably have landed since you submitted. Um, and so what I need to do is I need to test right before we merge. Um, because otherwise I'm not, testing, I'm not testing the potential state of the tree that I'm about to produce. Um, and so there's a race condition in there that most of the time it's actually probably going to be fine. Uh, but 
This is me dancing about, <laughs> about how uh, the, yeah, most of the time doesn't get you the times it doesn't. So anyways, that, that's, uh, I think we've got a slide about this, but the, normal, the more normal Garrett approach to, uh, to this is actually to run tests on submission. And um, I, I think a lot of that comes with uh, a lot of Garrett installations uh, are likely private. So you know, if if you if it's completely closed, you know that all your contributors are working for the same company. Then obviously that's not going to be quite the problem. But yeah. we try to be as open as possible. Yeah. Any anybody literally? Well, okay. You you have to sign a CLA because evil. Um, but you have to sign a CLA. So uh, the, there is there's one step you have to go through before you can submit code. But I still don't know. I mean, anybody can sign a CLA. <laughs> you know, like that's it's not hard. Um, so anyway. Uh, so anyway, so that's that's the general uh, process flow. Uh, we've been talking about it a little bit. Do you want to do the? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, Garrett was originally developed um, at Google for the Android project. Uh, it was actually developed uh, at Google several times. Yeah, it started uh -huh. off as Rietveld, if anybody's ever used Rietveld, uh, and then it and then it migrated to being the Python version of Jenkins. So er, of Garrett, if you check out the Git repo and you reset yourself to to tag 1.0, uh, you'll see a Python implementation of Garrett. Uh, and then they rewrote it in Java, which how many yeah. times that's uh -huh. happened in the history of mankind, I don't know. But yeah. um. <laughs> uh, so it's it's a uh, standalone patch review system. Um, it doesn't have a bug tracker or anything else associated with it. So actually, a lot of what we do is integrate Garrett with with other tools. It's it's kind of nice in that it um, it has a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, a lot of integration points for other other tools so uh, you can uh, it calls hooks on events uh, you can do JSON queries against it and uh, you can SSH to it to its pseudo SSH server it's not a you know it's not an actual shell uh, and it'll uh, spew an event stream at you and you can watch everything that goes on in real time so we actually in addition to the the things that we're running other people in the OpenStack community have their own tools that they're building on top of Garrett uh, to facilitate their own unique workflows so you know those aren't required for contributing to OpenStack but it's uh, it's great that we have a tool that's open enough for people to to Build things on top of like that. In fact, uh, in in a continuing uh, stream of answers to the to the question from earlier, uh, one, we we have a guy who's doing um, on on submission tests of uh, and he does he does integration deployment tests on a couple of different systems uh, for every every patch that's submitted before people review it. Um, he his, he's solved the security problem for that by just not caring. Um, but that's fine because it's his like that's his Not prerogative to do that. It doesn't it doesn't really. And then that system actually just reports comments back into uh, the Garrett system, like any other community. Anybody can leave comments on a on a review. Uh, you just come in, sign in, comment away. Uh, it doesn't have special privileges, um, but that's that's great. It's great that he's written that and that people can use that. You know. Uh, and uh, Garrett has uh, extensible review categories. By default, uh, it, it has the idea that uh, a change will be verified. So somebody. Um, in fact, I think probably the most simple Garrett installation is that uh, somebody tests each change uh, and says, yeah, I tested that and it works. So th then the next thing is you hook it up to, to Jenkins and it does pre-merge checks. We hooked it up to Jenkins and, uh, sorry, uh, to patch set uploaded checks. Uh, we hooked it up to Jenkins and did pre-merge checks. Uh, and then there's uh, the code review category as well. We've actually added a category uh, to, to ours called approved. So there's sort of a, a two-step uh, review process where you, you, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a change collects reviews and then somebody decides it's, it's time to go in and they, they, they set that. Um, the interesting, another interesting thing about our installation is that Jenkins is the one that decides that it gets merged. So that's actually something that's a little unusual for, for Garrett. You know, all of the people come along and decide whether it's okay to go in, and then Jenkins has the, the final say as to whether or when it goes in. And that's, um, that's actually a serialized process. So as soon as that starts, we know that the tree isn't going to change uh, via any other influences. So we can be very confident of what Monty was saying earlier about uh, how those uh, you know that that the change that the tree was tested exactly as it is when that change goes in. Um. Do, do you um, just run that in the same way we do? Very similar. Don't we just let jobs go in in parallel and they fail, or if the trees change while you're going, it just starts again? Uh, do you sort of optimistically assume that the patch is going to be alright and just take have one go at it and then next guy has a chance? Or? 
Uh, well, so the, the, the merge jobs uh, are not permitted to run in parallel. Uh, so they get queued up. Um, right now, Nova's, um, Nova's test suite takes about 10 minutes to run. And we actually we lucked out that it takes about 10 minutes to install DevStack as well. So that those, those run in parallel. So we actually have, you know, like, uh, I think there's four merge jobs that run for Nova in parallel. But, but the changes themselves are serialized uh, because we don't let any one job do that. And, you know, right now, uh, waiting for 10 minutes for your change to go. That's, that's not a big deal for, we, for people. Yeah, we may have to revisit that um, uh, when, when, that, when our testing gets that good. We're also, we're also hoping, I think when we get to that point, because, because we do have uh, donated cloud accounts from uh, two major cloud providers, um, means that, that spinning up machines is a thing I don't even have to think about. Um, uh, I can do it like water. So a, one of the ways that we've discussed as, test, as the test suite starts getting blown out is ways to slice that so that I can run part of the test suite on one machine in part. So I like it, if the unit tests start taking a half an hour, I could maybe spin up three machines and run a third of the, of the tests on each of them. Uh, so try and parallelize that. So for each test, I might spin up, might want to get from spinning up 50 machines. But who cares? That's not my machines. <laughs> so <laughs> every, everything that we do, uh, all of our um, configuration of our systems uh, is is um, either documented or uh, or in like puppet modules that are in Git on GitHub that you can check out. So uh, ostensibly anybody can can do exactly what we're doing, um, even to the point of copying our config files. Now, granted, possibly not everybody can spin up an infinite number of cloud servers. Without getting charged um, for them. Um. I promise we didn't design that to drive business to our employers. It's Of course not. We, Never yeah. would have thought of it. No. it. I mean, if you could do that, why wouldn't you, right? Right. So, yeah. So we did. Um, in fact, we're working on a, uh, I'm just going to diverge here for, I mean, we're working on a, uh, there's, a, there's already a Jenkins EC2 plugin that a lot of people use to do on-demand things, and we've got a guy working on a, a similar plugin based on the uh, Java J Clouds uh, library, which is a PAN provider, um, so that you can use. So if in my case, where our provider is not EC2 and is in fact Rackspace, uh, that I can uh, have Jenkins spin up those nodes for me. Um, so that's a, that's a thing that we're trying to, to push forward and get that, uh, and that obviously will all be might not be obvious. I should say that also everything that, that we do uh, is, is open source and any patches that we do to any of this stuff, um, the only reason that they're not upstream at the moment is because we're still having to go through some paperwork to get them landed. But the intent is that there's nothing that we do that is private to us. I'd Garrett's, Garrett's Garrett just came online last week. So <laughs> Yeah, the kernel org issue made it, I mean, yeah, understandably, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, it's tricky. Um, so uh, here's actually a, a transcript of, of a review. Uh, Gar as a UI thing, Garrett sort of squashes uh, review text if you're, you know, if if it if it's boring. Um, but uh, so the idea is that people can leave comments on this, and uh, eventually somebody decided that this should go in, and Jenkins started uh, doing these merge checks, and they all passed, and so they got merged. Uh, those are all links uh, directly to the Jenkins jobs. So if something fails, it's easy for a developer to to go right to it, look at the console output, and realize that they didn't put enough logging in. Yeah, <laughs> that's never not happened before. Uh, so here's a here's an overview of the review page uh, where uh, if, if you're running a standard Garrett, you'd only actually have the V and the R columns on the right. That's for verified and code review. A is our um, uh, approved, you know, it's ready to go in uh, thing. Uh, um, we, it's an exercise to the viewers to figure out what's going on with that change in the middle that's uh, verified, approved, and rejected. We, we know the answer, but if, if you want to find the, grab the idea of that and go dig around in our, our Garrett uh, and figure out what, the, what happened there, you're, you're more than welcome to. Um, a thing I, to, to mention about why we added the approved column is that um, uh, in the standard Garrett, a, we, have a, we have a policy that two core reviewers should review a, a patch before it goes in, and there's not really a great way to visually see that that has happened for another core reviewer, um, because the, uh, the I'm a core reviewer and I'm going to give this the, the extra plus two vote in the code review thing um, just indicates, oh, I've, and before that was actually triggering the, um, uh, the, the, the Jenkins. So, 
we did this so that, um, so that the core reviewers could vote as a core reviewer and we could see two of them and then somebody could choose, okay, I've, we've reached the threshold, this is gonna go in. So apparently we have 10 minutes and 14 is significantly less than 26. Oh my so gosh, okay, we're gonna talk faster. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, so there's a there's a plugin for Jenkins called the Garrett Trigger plugin, and it's wonderful. Uh, it lets it it um, SSHs into Garrett and uh, watches that event stream that I mentioned earlier. And uh, so uh, the version that we're using uh, actually uh, lets you trigger Jenkins jobs on somebody uploading a patch set, um, a patch set getting merged. Uh, or, uh, and this is a change that we made locally and we're about to upstream, um, somebody changing the review state of that patch. So yeah, um, uh, like we said earlier, we, we uh, did, um, we use OpenID from Launchpad uh, since all of the group information is there and Launchpad supports uh, an OpenID extension which exports group information as part of the OpenID ex uh, 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 interaction. Um, so Jenkins, excuse me, Garrett already supported OpenID um, but not in a, it, it supported the, hey, tell me what your open ID is, man, uh, sort of way. Um, and so we put in support for us saying, no, in fact, that's cool, but uh, you need to log in with your, with your Launchpad open ID. Um, and uh, we have, uh, uh, because of this, we have a single sign-on for the project for Garrett Jenkins, our wiki, um, and I don't, whatever else we want to throw at it. Yeah. Um, so uh, we did uh, bug integration um, with Launchpad. Uh, so we we do troll the um, uh, we troll the commit text uh, for for bug regexes. Uh, we make um, uh, links into the bug in Launchpad in the in the description there, and then also um, uh, we'll auto generate some topics here. Um, but then in Launchpad, we'll also come in and get or register uh, with Launchpad that there is a review up um, automatically. Um, and it will change the state when a, when, a, when a developer uploads a patch to Garrett for review that references a bug, it changes the state to fix committed um, and, uh, excuse me, work in progress. And then when, the, when that patch lands, it changes the state to fix committed. Uh, so we get those workflow transitions so people can track it. But the developer actually doesn't have to spend a lot of time going to bug trackers and changing the states of their bugs because that's sort of wasted time for a developer, honestly. Um, but so we can we can track that there, and we make sure that we give uh, links to both the commit. Uh, we do a read-only <coughs> mirror of the code to GitHub, which makes it easier for people just to branch it. We don't do anything else with the GitHub, um, but it's a, it's a good place to publish. Uh, and then um, we do, uh, and, and then links to the review if you want to track what what's going on with that. Uh, do the same thing with Launchpad blueprints, which are another. Uh, way of planning. Uh, virtually the exact same idea we look for. There are bugs that haven't happened yet. What's that? Yeah, there are bugs that haven't happened yet. Blueprints are things you're planning for, bugs are things that happened unexpectedly. Um, uh, and same thing, uh, we link into as much information as we can into the, into the blueprint on Launchpad so that you can track what's going on with that. Um, uh, Garrett supports an idea of topics so you can, um, you can upload uh, things and tag them in a particular, uh, in a particular way. Um, we've got some tooling in our Git review tool which we'll talk about in a second. Um, this is a topic with one uh, thing but if you, if you had multiple related um, changes that were to, uh, uh, to a sort of a longer term development thing you could track those inside of Garrett uh, in terms of um, uh, seeing progress. Um, and speaking of Git review, um, so the way that you submit patches to Garrett is you, uh, you push them there via Git, which is really cool. Uh, you push it to weird ref specs, um, but you, it's just a Git push command. Um, that does involve a bit of a learning curve um, for people to learn how to use the various Garrett features uh, by pushing to various weird URLs inside of Git. Um, it's very cool. You can totally do that. There's nothing that we've done that, that breaks somebody's ability to know how Garrett works to do all of the things you can do with Garrett. However, um, the fine folks at Gluster had a tool, they also use Garrett, uh, had a tool in their source tree called rfc.sh uh, that made it really, it was a run this script and it will do the, it will do the appropriate incantation uh, with Git to submit your patch up to Garrett. Um, uh, we took that and put it into our trees at first and that was great. We're like, yay, we've got this thing. Um, and then I don't know if you noticed before, but I mentioned that we've got six core projects. Uh, we've also got uh, some branches of them, stable branches of those. We've also got um, client libraries. Uh, we've also got uh, ancillary projects. I got um, really tired of copying this script into every repository. Yeah, and then if we made a change to it, heaven forbid, now we've got to update 15, 20 repositories. We never uh, did. Wait, what? 
We, we never updated it. Yeah, we just wrote Git review instead. That's true. Yeah. So we wrote this. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, this is it's in Python. Um, you can pip install it. So pip install Git review. We're working on getting it into both Fedora and Ubuntu. Um, but uh, uh, so it, it actually presents as a normal Git command, um, a Git subcommand. Um, you just type, amazingly enough, Git review, um, and it uh, does all of the right things. Um, if everything is magical. It actually, uh, we stuck a .git review file in our repositories with all the configuration information about where to find Garrett. So if you've never submitted to Garrett before, the first thing it does is it sets up your repository correctly and then yep. submits your change to the right place. Yep. And typically, it also it will also uh, unless you uh, unless you tell it not to, it will rebase your uh, change for you on top of. Uh, on top of the tip of the thing that you're submitting to, uh, so that your patch is actually the thing that you think that you're submitting. Um, and this is this is actually this is why it's a good idea to use a program like this because if you didn't, then you would be you know get push the address of the Garrett server refs for master bug whatever. Yeah. So, so it, it in addition to processing the bug uh, the commit text for bug and blueprint information, uh, we use that to to make uh, Garrett topics. Uh, for people. If you don't want to put a .git review file in your repo, because there's some people that don't like having that sort of thing in their code repos, the only thing you have to do, by the only by hand setup step you'd have to do is to create a uh, git remote called Garrett with the location of your Garrett server. And then all of the git review stuff will work magically like that. Um, so this has been really helpful. And we're able to add uh, you know, uh, various features. We added a feature to this. There's a dash D flag to it that you give a Garrett change review ID, and it will download that change into a, into a local branch. Uh, for you, so that if you want to look at the code locally, you don't have to, you know, know how to do all the various things. You can just, I want this, and it'll grab it for you, and then you can do what you want to with that. Um, so that's really cool. Um, we pushed that back to the, sent some messages to the Gluster folks uh, uh, to, to let them know about it. And we've got a couple other projects that have started picking that up. So yeah. So there's um, nothing OpenStack sp specific in this. If you use Garrett, uh, you can use Git Review. Yeah. And actually, if you want to make it support another review system, that's cool with us too. Yeah, sure. We'll take totally. a patch for that. Yeah. Um, oh, our Git review is managed in the OpenStack Garrett, so you can Git review changes to Git review, of course. Um, uh, so, uh, how are we doing on time? A uh, couple minutes. Three and a half minutes. Um, we can walk through. So that's. Uh, we, so we've got. We can walk through what we is that the bridge about there? Yeah. Um, so we we test a lot of things. Uh, the, we we on on all the commits right now. We've been running unit tests from the tree. Um, we've been working on adding um, uh, functional sort of in, functional integration tests um, with the idea that there's some things that we can spin up virtual servers for. Do it do a, a single server install of that and do a sort of post install does this work testing. Um, and then there's other things that we have to do bare metal uh, deployments of. And so we've got some machines. They're not currently operational at the moment. Uh, the, the process works. There's, a, there's some other issues uh, in there. But that we would do a, uh, a complete wipe and reinstall from scratch um, onto, onto bare metal machines and then deploy that revision of, uh, of OpenStack onto those bare metal machines and do that testing. Um, and uh, uh, there's, some, there's some issues in there. Um, with both of these, one of the things like the, the functional tests are easy for <coughs> devs to run locally. You can use DevStack on your laptop and run the tests and do it. Uh, and so that's we actually run that because we don't want to run a lot of stuff on our Jenkins infrastructure that a developer couldn't <coughs> reproduce locally because then it's really tough if it fails them for them to reproduce the bug and fix it. Um, so, however, one of the things that we have been developing, and it's not rolled live because we haven't gotten permission to roll it live yet. Um, it's one of the problems with people giving you free resources is sometimes you have to ask them permission to do things with them, um, is uh, Jim wrote some excellent code that um, on failure uh, will basically install the developer's SSH key on the, on the VM and hand it to them. Um, so if their test breaks the, if their code breaks the test, here, here's the VM um, with, the, with the, the, your broken system, uh, fix it. Or, or use this to debug the problem, um, and we're going to delete the system in 24 hours. Um, so no fair writing bad code to get free servers. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> if you could automate that. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, and and then and then uh, we probably won't be able to do that with bare metal unless we had a lot more bare metal. Um, Anybody have a lot of bare metal? Yeah, if somebody wants to give us a lab of like a thousand bare metal machines, uh, then we might be able to do bare metal deployments and hand you logins to that. But I'm guessing that's probably not going to happen anytime in the near future. Um, what's that? Uh, hey, you got some, do you know any companies that, that make machines? <laughs> awesome. Great. 
Um, uh, anyway, this is uh, where the other thing, um, and if we were here for another couple hours, we'd talk about this, but we're, um, we've, been, we've been trying to structure the way that we do our testing in such a way that um, the ver there's, OpenStack has a lot of options of how you can deploy it, and a lot of people have vested interests. So you've got uh, you know, HP that has their interests, or Rackspace that has the things that they're more interested in, or Cisco and Citrix. Um, I can't possibly test. I can't possibly be responsible for all of the combinations of those. But if you're a vendor who's working on something and you want to hand me a lab, uh, and you don't, actually you don't have to hand me the lab. If you want to have a lab that's configured to test the configuration you care about uh, and hand me an entry point to it, I will happily run whatever, like I'll trigger runs of tests in your lab. And it's your lab, you're the one who cares about the thing. So you can define what the test is, because I don't care. Um, but if you're really interested to make sure that your crazy Cisco switch works, then you run whatever that test is. Uh, and if it passes, then, then we'll report that into the central Jenkins. And if that's really solid, we can start gating trunk on that too. Exactly, so that you make sure that that random developer from you know your competitor doesn't uh, accidentally uh, you know, tank your tank your code. So we're trying to we're trying to make that as as vendor neutral and be a centralized point where all of the vendors who are participating in this can uh, uh, can sort of collect and coalesce. Uh, there's a, a integration test project called Tempest. Yet another thing that we have uh, that we manage in um, get, and that's a whole other thing. We could babble on about that for a while, but I think we're probably out. Yep, we're out of time. Um, so great. Uh, that's what we got because that's time. Thank you, everybody.